All right, long time no see. I know it's been a while since I uploaded on the channel, but it's just in that month of September, there's so little going on in the basketball world. It's so hard to create content. And we know over here is quality over quantity. Hope I pronounced that right, but you guys know what I'm talking about. But nonetheless, it's time to tune the channel back up, and I want to start off with my hometown team, my favorite team in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons. And before the season starts, I know we got about a handful of days. The preseason has already started, but before the official NBA season start, I want to talk about some expectations for as many teams as I can before the season start. And I'm going to start it off with the Detroit Pistons. And after last season, you guys are probably getting tired of me saying this but the Detroit Pistons are coming off the worst season in franchise history I had this one guy get mad at me in the comment section because he was talking about all these circumstances that the Detroit Pistons went through which weren't untrue at all but what I said isn't untrue either. It's still the worst season in franchise history, winning just 14 games and then breaking the NBA record for most consecutive games lost in a single season. So if you were a fan last year, the Detroit Pistons, if you worked at Little Caesars Arena, scanning the tickets, if you were the janitor, um, if you were a member of the coaching staff, and especially the players, last year was a, it, it was a nightmare. So um, I think a lot is riding on this season for the Detroit Pistons. And when I say a lot is riding, that doesn't mean that they have to come out here. They don't have to come out here and win an NBA championship, but we do need to see some small improvement. So um, you guys seen the title. I use the word revamp for the Detroit Pistons. Now, when I say revamped, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have revamped their rosters. We look at our roster, it's still the same. We still have majority of our young core, um, minus Killian Hayes. Killian, Killian Hayes had the audacity to request a trade last season, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm glad they released him because no way he he was playing the way that he was playing and he gonna request a trade but um nonetheless majority of that young core is still here from the last few years but the detroit pistons they went out and they made smaller roster changes bringing in tobias harris bringing in malik beasley bringing in tim hardaway jr so um got some got some much needed veteran presence on this team but i think the young guys on this team are are hungry they're revamped now i'm around the same age as a lot of these guys on the detroit pistons i'm 20 three years of age i'm actually might be slightly older than most of our young core i think i am i think i'm older than everyone outside of isaiah stewart which is pretty crazy i'm i'm, I'm getting up there but all I know is if it was me um, in their shoes and after last season, I know I would be very hungry, very excited to get out on the basketball court. And I think that's what we're going to get from our Detroit Pistons. Now, one thing that has caught my eye this offseason, this was recently, Kay Cunningham, he posted something on his Instagram. Um, he just posted a picture of him in his Detroit Pistons uniform saying that this was year four from him. And Kay Cunningham looks very different. Um, he looks very he looks very strong. It looks like he's been putting some work in in the gym. And it's honestly very impressive that he's able to put on that much muscle if he's be, um, with him being vegan. I don't. I know I read about him being vegan a while ago. I don't know if he's still vegan, but for him to put on that type of muscle and be vegan is very impressive because um, my my protein goal. I try to get in like 200 grams of protein a day, and, and, and it is so hard. You have to do so much eating. So. You take meat out of the equation, pause, taking meat out of the equation, um, I know it's probably tougher. So very impressed with Cade Cunningham, but I think this is going to be a, a great season um, individually for some of these young guys on our team. Um, we look at Cade Cunningham, who... Um, who, who has acknowledged this? He goes through so much scrutiny because he isn't winning, and I think it's very unfair, but we all know life is unfair. So if Kay Cunningham is okay with the scrutiny, I'm going to be okay with the scrutiny as well. I'm just glad that he's hearing it, and he's very motivated with turning this franchise around and getting us back into the playoffs and one day back into championship contention. So I think um, looking at Kay Cunningham last year, who was amazing, 20-plus points per game, 5-plus rebounds per game, and damn near eight assists per game, shooting 46% from the field, and then high 30s in the, from the three-point line. It was a terrific season for Kay Cunningham. Um, coming into this next season, I expect Kay Cunningham, I expect him to make the all-star team. He might make the all-NBA team because he is that talented. If he can get the Detroit Pistons to the playoffs or maybe 
or maybe the and we're going to talk about the the, the deep the Detroit Pistons their goals their goals as a whole in a second sorry if I'm talking so fast it's just been so long since I made a video and I'm honestly super super duper excited but Kay Cunningham I think with the new additions Tobias Harris guys like Malik Beasley Tim Hardaway Jr. having those guys around him is going to make life so much easier for him and um, honestly Kay Cunningham I could see him averaging 25 points per game and at least eight assists per game. I think he's that talented and I think he's going to have that great of a season. So that's what I'm expecting from Kate Cunningham individually. Nothing to change, just steady improvement because that's what we've seen from him since he's coming to the NBA. He's continuously getting better and better with little to no help around him. And um, another guy that I think could have a, a big time season is Jalen Duran. And a lot of people, we see Jalen Duran, we see how big he is. Um, pause and we see the muscles we see the muscle mass we see the height we forget that when he came into the nba he was the youngest player in the league so um we've seen so like we've seen glimpses from Jalen Duran. we've seen him have some crazy games we've seen him put up some crazy stat lines um when it comes to his rebounding coming to blocks coming to scoring the basketball we've seen him showing glimpses of him being a, a Dwight Howard type of player a guy that can protect the rim rebound at a high level and finish soundly around the rim so we've seen glimpses of that but we've also seen Jalen Duran um not be the most productive at times now I don't think it's a time we all know it's not a talent thing at all it's just it's just mental it's, it's just mental he's still learning that's still very young to be playing in the nba especially when you look at his peers a lot of his peers have been playing um in the nba for a lot longer than him and they've seen more than him and they've been learning uh, more than him so now that he's got a couple of years now that he's got a couple of years under his belt I think we could see big time improvement from him as well. And I, I don't even think it's really not him not understand. I think it's a focus thing. When, when I see Jalen Duran not being as productive, he's not as focused. And we might see him pick up some silly fouls and do things of that nature. So I think if Jalen Duran can stay healthy for 90%, 80% of this season, he could have a big time season individually as well. And, and the one player and the one individual one individual who's who's probably getting slept on the most is Jaden Ivey. And a lot of people now last year was just last year was it was tough for Jaden Ivey. Monty Williams, he killed the he killed his he killed the vibe for Ivy at the very beginning of the season. Um he finished the he killed the vibe at the be very beginning of the season, starting Killian Hayes, the guy that requested a trade and got cut a few days after Monty Williams thought it was best to start him over Jaden Ivey. And according to Jaden Ivey, this was last minute. If you watched the Pistons last year, Jaden Ivey, he was just not in it um spiritually. It's, he just seemed demoralized the whole season, his facial expression, and then also he had the haircut, which made it also look like he just looked he just looked sad the whole season. But Jaden I, we, we picked him fourth overall, excuse me, fifth overall for a reason. He get those John ja Morant's comparisons for a reason, Russell Westbrook comparisons for a reason because he is supremely talented. So I think him with a revamped attitude, and like we said, we got a new got a new head coach and JB Bickerstaff, got a new front hire management. I think Jaden Ivey, he could come out. He's also just like Kay Cunningham, going to benefit from the spacing of these new shooters. And Jaden Ivey could come out and have a light out season because we all know he just has some things that you just can't teach that speed that athleticism that ability to jump some guys are just born with that they were born with the genetics to, to put in the work to get their body to perform like that so Jaden Ivey um though um those guys are spectacular one more guy I want to touch on individually before we talk about the the Detroit Pistons as a whole Asar Thompson Asar Thompson is extremely good as well now one thing that I've noticed about Asar Thompson and his twin brother Amin Thompson they love the game of basketball and when you love something when you love something all you want to do is get better at it you want to be as best as you possibly can and I I'm not going to sit up here in front like I've been watching Asar Thompson and it's offseason 
season, but if you watch him in interviews and you just listen to him and his brother talk, I just know he's been him and his brother together. And that's another thing. When you got a twin brother, when you got a brother who wants something just as much as you do, you have somebody to push you. I just know them boys was putting in some heavy work in this offseason. So I'm very, very excited to see Asar Thompson this season. Last year he came in being one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. And what I love about him, he wasn't scared to guard nobody. He wasn't scared to get his ankles broken because it happened a couple times. He wasn't scared to get a tough shot hit in his face. He wasn't scared to get dunked on or anything like that. He wanted all of the smoke. So I think Asar Thompson, him improving on his perimeter shot, everything else offensively was really good. He watched the Pistons last year. Asar Thompson is a great decision maker with the basketball in his hands in the half court in transition. He Man, just like Jalen Duran, Asar Thompson, he had some crazy rebounding games, especially to start the season. And then, oh, Monty, Monty Williams saw that we was – we was already in the hole for the season. Now he's trying all these different things, and he's not letting them play. He should have left those. He should have left Asar Thompson in the fire last season to let him learn. But nonetheless, it's a new season, and these four guys right here, um, these four guys right here, um, K. Cunningham, Jaden Ivy. Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, and Asar Thompson, I think they're all going to have the opportunity to take huge steps next season. And we also got Ron Holland as well, who looked really good in his preseason debut. So the young talent on this team is oozing, is oozing. We're just hoping that this new veteran presence that we um this new veteran veteran presence that we brought into the team can help these young guys. So that's what I'm thinking about individually and how we look at this team as a whole. And I said there's a lot riding on this season. And when I say that, I didn't mean the Detroit Pistons. They don't need to make the playoffs this season. They don't need to win an NBA championship or a playoff series this season. But what needs to happen, we need to see the Detroit Pistons be competitive. We need to see them have moments in the season where they win four games in a row, where they win three games in a row, maybe five games in a row. Instead of a seven-game losing streak, we need to turn that into a six, five-game losing streak. And we need to cut those seven-game losing streaks down to maybe two or three-game losing streaks. And I think if the Detroit Pistons can to, to can to can become that competitively, I think it'll be great. And I think they're gonna have a great opportunity to crack this play in tournament. We look at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. I think it's gotten a, a little weaker. Some of those teams that got into the playoff into the playoffs um to the play in tournament last year, the Chicago Bulls, they just lost DeMar DeRozan. Um I know Kobe White is striving, but I don't looking at their roster, I don't think they're that much better than the Detroit Pistons, and I don't think they have a better uh, a better player than Kay Cunningham on their roster. Uh, we look at the Atlanta Hawks. I think the Detroit Pistons are definitely going to be better than the Atlanta Hawks um, this, this upcoming season. And one team we do have to be on the lookout for. If the Charlotte Hornets are healthy, they could be a very, very, they can be a very, very good team if the Charlotte Hornets go into next season healthy. But that's what I'm thinking. These are my expectations for the Detroit Pistons going into the 2024-2025 NBA season. I know it's very, very, um, I know it's very, very important. So, yeah, um, if you guys enjoy, please leave a like, comment down below if you agree or disagree, and then subscribe. We are so back. We're about to be uploading daily, weekly. Once again, the NBA season is right around the corner, and I'm so excited to um, talk about and, and share these things with you guys. So, if you enjoy, leave a like, comment down below, and then subscribe. And that's Curtin.